What's going on guys? I'm here to bring you another 2014 NAWCQ hat format deck profile. I'm really excited for this one specifically because this is my favorite deck of all time, Xyz Infernity or Infernity in general. Uh, anyone who played this format knows how scary of a deck this could be. What I will say is while this is a really strong deck, it has fallen out of the format a little based on more recent hat format uh, tournaments and things, and the sole reason for that is this is an extremely complicated sort of combo deck, and people have started playing more trap-heavy decks that kind of hard counter this in a sense. It's still extremely strong, especially in the right hands, but you have to know how to play it and you have to know the different lines and siding and things like that so this will be just the deck profile i'll explain a lot of the cards and stuff but siding and things will probably be for a different video but without further ado let's get into this deck profile because if you're playing in hat format tournaments this is something you are going to want to know so starting with the monsters the most important monster of the whole deck is infernity archfiend pretty much the idea of infernities is they get their effects based on having no cards in hand and this one specifically when you have no cards in hand when it's special summoned you're able to search an infernity card that includes the spells the traps other monsters it should even be able to search itself which is honestly very crazy this is before the hard once per turns and things like that so this is the heart and soul of the deck the next card is two copies of infernity necromancer pretty much while you have no cards in your hand you're able to special summon an infernity from your graveyard so if you have no cards in hand you can summon this and summon back your infernity archfiend which will then get you an additional search the other thing is when it's normal summon it switches to defense kind of irrelevant but it does have 2000 defense so that is something to keep in mind after that, we play three copies of Stygian Street Patrol. Some builds will play two, but three is the most standard. Pretty much when it's in Graveyard, you can banish it and special summon a Fiend Monster from Grave, and it can even summon itself. So if you have too many monsters in hand, it can be cloggy, but it can get those out of the way. Super strong, super important for your main combos in this deck. After that play two copies of dark greffer again another way to foolish a card usually being able to foolish whatever you don't have so if you don't have arch fiend yet you can send that you can send your stygians to get other monsters out of your hand it's really just a way to foolish one as well as getting monsters out of your hand we also play one copy of armageddon knight slightly worse than the greffer the reason i play two greffer over the armageddons is simply because in a situation where you need to clear your hand you can send the armageddon with greffer after that this deck does play a lot of spell cards so we're playing two copies of summoner monk being able to ditch a spell and summon any four so there's a lot of cool things you can do with this if you have no hand you can summon archfiend and search a card uh, you can summon the greffer ditch one to foolish like i mentioned before if you have too many things this card really just facilitates a lot of your combos and can get a lot of things started after that we i play a bunch of well i wouldn't say a bunch i play three uh extenders I play one Photon Thrasher, one Dynatherium, this being able to special summon itself, this also being able to special summon itself, and one copy of Tin Goldfish. This is probably the worst one, simply because it doesn't special itself, and if they stop this, uh, depending on what your hand is, um, it can really hurt, but it helps to have an extra body that can special another body so that you can get into your rank 4 plays. And the last monster is Archfiend Hyrus. Basically, when it's sent to the graveyard, you can search an Archfiend card, so that will be the Archfiend field spell that you'll see soon, as well as Infernity Archfiend. So, super cool. I know it might seem like a lot of monsters, 
monsters in a sense for a deck that wants to have no cards in hand, but you really do turbo through it, even if you open with, you know, three monsters, four monsters at times. They all kind of work together, being able to get them out of your hand and still combo. Again, if you want a combo video, I will make that for you, but you have to let me know in the comments section because this deck can be kind of technical. Moving on to the spell cards. Like I said, there's a lot of spells. One, Infernity Launcher. This card is at one in this format. Basically, uh, it lets you, when it's activated or, well, while it's on the field, once per turn you can discard a Infernity Monster from your hand, so it helps get extra Infernities out of hand. And then the part that makes this card crazy is you can send it to the graveyard and target up to two Infernity Monsters in your graveyard and special summon them. So you can summon a Necromancer and an Archfiend, two Necromancers, different things like that. So really important card for your combos, really good card in general. After that, uh, reinforcement of the army, being able to search your extenders and different things, Greffer, Armageddon Knight, Photon Thrasher, as well as being a spell, so if you already have your combos, you can just set it and get it out of your hand. Foolish Burial, again, another card being able to send your Street Patrol, send your Hyrus, send any combo piece you're missing. One Mind Control, just a good going second card, as well as just being able to take your opponent's stuff to make your own Xyz. One Allure of Darkness, this card is really played a lot in this deck, but if I had to cut something, it probably would be this. Out of all the games I've played, this comes up probably the least, and in the situations where you are activating this, usually you're in not the best position. So this card's kind of iffy, I guess it could be considered a flex spot, so that you still need to play. After that, one Archfiend Palabrinth. This is the Archfiend card. It gives all of your uh, fiend type monsters 500 attack, which is important because this deck can have problems getting over big monsters. But it also has the effect that you basically um, you can target an Archfiend card you control, banish a different Archfiend monster, and then special summon from your hand deck or graveyard an Archfiend monster with the same level as that target. Um, it has weird synergies and stuff, and it comes up. Uh, if this card confuses you, don't worry. It is a weird card. Some builds play it, some don't. It's important for one of the combos where you set all your traps, but it's also technically not necessary, but it's good to still have that as a card. That's it for the one-ofs. After that, we play three copies of Upstart Goblin. This is a combo deck. If you get into your full combo, it's not going to matter what your opponent's life is. You're basically going to shut them out of the game and then kill them the next turn. Three copies of Soul Charge. Um, this is also kind of a combo piece with all the foolish type cards, being able to activate it, get into more uh, rank fours and stuff that we'll be going over later. Really, really strong card. After that... 3 MST in the case where we are going second, just clearing out their back row so we are free to play our turn in most cases. Really, really strong. Again, another card that you can just pop your own back row if you open too many also, just being able to clear zones. Two copies of instant fusion this is basically another extender but it's also a spell so again if you open too many monsters you can get it out of the way as well as you can bait your opponent's monsters uh or i should say bait your opponent's spell and trap negates and different things or monster negates uh to negate your own monster so for example if they stop your greffer or something and they think okay you know what are they going to do now you can then extend out and keep comboing two copies of forbidden lance again there is a lot more things like breakthrough skill fiendish and cards of such in the format so being able to protect your guys and still combo off as well as being a spell you can discard and uh in general just a really solid card um especially for going second or you know making sure that some of your guys stay on the field if your opponent then has something bigger to get over your arch fiends or other cards on field that is it for the spells moving on to the trap cards there's only a few 
one copy of Infernity Barrier. While you control a face-up attack position, Infernity Monster, when your opponent activates a spell, trap, or monster effect, you can negate it. It's a counter trap. It's at one in this format, or you'd be playing more. And lastly, three copies of Infernity Break. Um, also for this, you have to have no cards in hand, like I mentioned at the beginning. Same with these, no cards in hand, but you banish an Infernity card that can include your spell and traps and pop a card your opponent controls. Some builds of this uh, will play Vanity's Emptiness in the main deck. Uh, a lot of recent tournaments have shown that Vanity's Emptiness isn't as much played as people would be afraid of it like it was back in the day, uh, simply because so many people are aware of it more now, so they're playing a lot more back row removal and ways to um, actually get rid of that. Uh, this deck can side Vanity's Emptiness, and I'll explain when we get into the first card I'm going to show in the extra deck, which is Master Key Beetle, being able to protect it. But in general, uh, this is the perfect lineup. You don't want to see too many traps, again, clogging zones and stuff. So moving into the extra deck, as I mentioned, Master Key Beetle being able to protect a back row uh, and making so it can't be destroyed. And it, if this would be destroyed, I can then destroy that back row. So this with Vanity's Emptiness, like I said, or any other Floodgate for that matter. Super, super powerful. One Karen Gorgon being able to redirect cards that target is really good. One copy of Honor Arc. Some people play two. Uh, I feel the extra deck for this deck is sort of tight, minus one spot, so uh, you could play two of this, some people will play two Exiton, I think one is fine. Two copies of Diamond Direwolf, this is important for clearing your own monster zones, funny enough, so like you have to use these for your combo, but I guess in theory you can also use them to pop your opponent's card. One Exiton Knight, just a good card, like I said, you could play two if you want. From here, there's options. Uh, I play two Lavaval Chain. A lot of builds will play three. Usually it's two or three. I think two is enough, but I also go back and forth with wanting to play three, wanting to play two, but you definitely need to play multiple of this. This basically turns any of your fours into full combos type things, uh, or just extending out your combos, being able to search more of those traps that you want to have in play. Uh, two is really good. Like I said, play around with it, and I'll explain the other card that you could technically take out if you want to play the other. One Dweller, just a good card in the format. One Cowboy. Uh, I like Cowboy in this deck because it also has the effect besides the burn, being able to just swing over things that are bigger because, again, like I said, this deck can have problems with that. And for the last rank four, I play one Rhapsody and Berserk. Again, it's like a DD Crow as well as being able to get your Xyz bigger, which is so important. I can't, like, stress that enough. Next, I play two copies of Levier. The reason I have the common here is because this is kind of my flex spot. There are a lot of games where you need Levier in order to bring back your banished Stygian Street Patrols as well as play through your opponent when they DD Crow you. Um, so two is really good. You definitely want to be playing at least one, but this is the card that you could technically cut and play a third Lavaval Chain if you wanted, or if you want to play, you know, a second Exiton or anything like that. Those are the cards. Um, well, this is the card specifically that I would cut. And the last two cards in the extra are just instant fusion targets, a level four, level three. Uh, you should technically play Camion Wizard. Um, I don't know where mine is, but the only reason you play it is because it has a little less attack, which in most cases is irrelevant unless you're playing into bottomless. But those are the last two. And anyways, guys, that is the deck profile for Infernity. Like I said, if you have questions about siding patterns, side cards you should be playing, things to watch out for, combos and such, definitely make sure you comment that in the comment section and I'll make a video on that, as well as making sure you like this video and subscribe for more hat format content, deck profiles, duels, and things of such. I plan to do a lot. But anyways, guys, I will see you in the next video.